Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Ancient City the remains of an ancient city have been discovered in southern Africa. Researchers believe the complex ruins of the walled city that they found could have been built 200,000 years ago. This would completely change history, because as far as mainstream scientists believe, the earliest civilizations and urban settlements began to develop between 4000 and 3000 BC, when agriculture and trade allowed people to stay in one place. If true, the discovery would show that human beings have been dwelling in cities for 195,000 years before the Pyramid of Giza was built. It's important to say that right now, there is no archaeological evidence that this city dates back 200,000 years. It's all speculation. It's also important to note that the oldest major structures built by humans go back only to about 10,000 years ago. The site, located in Mozambique, was allegedly discovered for the first time by a pair of researchers named Michael Tellinger and Johann Hein. The site is quite complex, spanning a massive area in the desert. It is made up of circular structures and farming areas. There appear to be large enclosed settlements where ancient humans lived, and the remains of narrow roads connecting one settlement to another. From the air, it almost looks like a dreamcatcher. The area is speckled with the circular ruins of the settlements, with the roads winding like spider webs between them. Now, here's what we know about the controversial dating. Michael Tellinger claims the dolerite erosion has been dated to 200,000 years ago, which indicates the structures are the same age. But nothing is conclusive, and no mainstream archaeologists have even mentioned the site, so it's quite difficult to know for sure. What we have found that is 200,000 years old is bedding used by ancient humans 200,000 years ago found in South Africa in a cave. The layer of grass and ash found inside the cave was about a foot thick and would have been a comfortable bed back in the day. However, this is a far cry from an entire city. Number 9. The Great Flood and the Comet Back in the 17th century, science as a study began to emerge. As human knowledge progressed, religion and the dependence on the Bible began to be questioned, and so scientists tried to make sense of the miracles in the Bible by using physics. This takes us to the year 1680. In Manhattan, people looked to the sky and saw something that made them shriek in terror. There was a comet streaking across the heavens, so bright that it blazed like a fireball in the middle of the day. Nobody in Manhattan had ever seen a comet before and they were terrified that it would crash into the world and kill them. But then there was Sir Isaac Newton, the genius scientist who figured out gravity. He looked at the comet, calculated its trajectory, and used it to confirm his universal theory of gravitation. And then another scientist by the name of William Whiston took the calculations even further. He claimed that the comet passed Earth 2,000 years prior and it had come so close that it sprayed the world with water from its tail. He claimed the comet exerted such immense gravitational force that the oceans were pulled apart from the planet's crust. All that extra water was what led to the biblical flood. We know today that William Whiston was wrong, but in the 17th century, the people of Manhattan didn't know. And so, in one bold claim, the scientist changed history. He made the flood in the Bible a real event caused by a passing comet. Number 8. Ancient Swords A pair of swords from 2,800 years ago have been discovered in the small Bavarian town of Andex. The swords date all the way back to the Iron Age and are currently the oldest iron weapons found in southern Germany. What makes the swords so unique is that they were forged in the Hallstatt period, a span of time in both the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. It was a transitional period and a time of great technological leaps. Each sword was found deposited in a shallow grave among other objects that had clearly been offered as burial goods. Ceramic vessels, other swords, bronze jewelry, and things that would have been valuable to Iron Age people. The people here were called the Hallstatt culture, and they flourished in Europe from around the 12th century BC to the 6th century BC. But these swords in particular were made at the exact point when this culture left the Bronze Age and entered the Iron Age, and that's what makes them so important. 
we can see in these swords history actually changing. Because here's the thing, the swords are a little different. Both were dumped in graves in the 8th century BC, but one was slightly older than the other. The older one was made in the exact shape and style of a bronze sword, yet crafted out of iron. The slightly newer one, which was probably only newer by a few decades, was made in the design of iron swords to make use of the stronger material. This really captures the shift from bronze to iron in a way we've never seen before. Number 7. The Earliest Artwork A group of cave paintings in Indonesia is rewriting what we know about the history of artwork. The paintings were found in an Indonesian cave and may date back 39,900 years. That makes them among the oldest cave paintings ever found. They are on the island of Sulawesi, where some of the first cave artists thrived. It was like the Renaissance Florence of the Stone Age. But here's why the discovery has changed history. Up until the Indonesian cave paintings, the oldest similar pieces of artwork were found strictly in prehistoric Europe. But now, a painting of a pig deer in Indonesia may just be the oldest figurative art in the world. This is totally bizarre because it shows that Europe and Indonesia began practicing similar styles of artwork at the same time, when they had absolutely no way of ever meeting one another. Archaeologist Maxime Aubert from Griffith University in Queensland says even older cave art will almost definitely be discovered in Indonesia. It's just a matter of time. The real mystery now is trying to figure out why Indonesia, and the island of Sulawesi in particular, was such a hotbed for artwork. Especially since it was a world away from Spain and France, where most of the other artwork has been found. Number 6. Shipwrecks A dentist in Sicily, Italy has just helped to rewrite the history surrounding one of the most important battles ever fought in Europe. It all began in the early 2000s when archaeologist Sebastiano Tusa visited a dental surgeon in the Italian town of Trapani. At the office, he noticed that the dentist had a bronze piece from a Roman ship sitting on display. The dentist said it had been given to him by a local fisherman, but he didn't know its true significance. The archaeologist knew that it was incredibly important and suspected it may have come from the legendary battle of the Egates. The battle was fought between the Roman Republic and the Carthaginians. This was many centuries before Rome became an empire, back in 241 BC. It was the only battle of that era that took place in the waters around Sicily. It was the end of the First Punic War and the start of Rome's domination of the Mediterranean for the next 700 years. Clearly, this was an important battle, but historians have never been able to get any physical evidence of it happening because they didn't know where the shipwrecks were hiding. With help from this dentist, Sebastiano was able to track down where the relic in his office had come from. This eventually led to the discovery of dozens of shipwrecks scattered across the bottom of the Mediterranean. Historians are now putting together a real, historically accurate picture of what happened during the Battle of Egates. Number 5. The Origin of Mankind a new discovery in Africa is challenging what we know about the origin of mankind. To understand what's happening with the origin of the human species, we need to go back to 1947. That was when Robert Broom and his colleagues discovered the fossils of an ancient pre-human nicknamed Mrs. Plez in a cave. This cave system in South Africa is known as the Cradle of Humankind, and it holds more Australopithecus fossils than anywhere in the world. Mrs. Plez turned out to be roughly 2.1 million years old, according to research at the time. It was named Australopithecus africanus, and scientists believed it to be the missing link between humans and primates. But that whole belief is changing. In fact, everything we thought we knew for the past 50 years has just been thrown out the window. A new study by researcher Daryl Granger has shown that the skull found in 1947 actually dates back about 3.6 million years. This is shocking because it would place the fossil found in South Africa in the same time as the ancient fossils of humans found in Ethiopia in the 1970s, like Lucy. While many people have considered South Africa to be the cradle of human civilization, 
it's actually in East Africa. Now that we know that Mrs. Plez dates to a similar period as Lucy and others, scientists once again need to go back to the drawing board to try to figure out where and when the earliest hominin that developed into the Homo genus lived. Number 4. The Story of Mesopotamia New discoveries in Iraq could be changing the history books in regard to what we know about ancient Mesopotamia. Excavations were recently completed at the ancient complex of Girsu, done by researchers with the British Museum. According to archaeologist Sebastian Ray, the change in the timeline all has to do with irrigation. For the last few decades, historians have held the belief that the first real civilization of Sumer prospered because of irrigation. They learned how to move water to where they wanted it, which resulted in endless supplies of food. And with the world's first complex civilization stuffed on yummy snacks, they were able to focus on developing a system of writing, building massive temples, and growing their culture. But this may not actually be the case. Girzu is a very old city that was built by the Sumerians about 5,000 years ago. The archaeologists with the British Museum were trying to figure out just how extensive the irrigation system here was. What they found was that, in fact, the irrigation system dates back about 1,000 years before the city was born. In other words, the whole area had already been irrigated by extremely primitive farmers around the year 4300 BC. This means it wasn't irrigation that sparked urban construction and led to all kinds of advancements in technology. The irrigation had already been there. Scientists are now completely stunned because they don't know what the motivation was that pushed societies forward, if not water. Water had always been the key, but now it seems obvious that water had nothing to do with it. Number 3. Feeding the Masses an ancient mosaic discovered inside of a mysterious church in Israel may just change history. The mosaic was made in the 5th century and depicts one of Jesus' most famous miracles. It was found immaculately preserved underneath the ashes of a fire inside a place called the Burnt Church. This is in the old city of Hippos, which overlooks the Sea of Galilee and was important during the Roman and Byzantine periods. The church itself was probably burned down in the 7th century, when the last Persian Empire came through the region. But let's get back to the miracle. The mosaic shows when Jesus Christ supposedly fed 5,000 men using five loaves of bread and two fish. This is incredible because it matches exactly with what was written in the New Testament. And according to the head of excavations, Michael Eisenberg, the burnt church is located in the exact spot where most of Jesus' miracles had occurred. This may not exactly change history, but it certainly shows a historical accuracy with the New Testament and further supports the idea that Jesus was real and maybe really did perform miracles. Number 2. Greek Tombs in Naples In the Italian city of Naples, researchers recently investigated some Greek tombs inside an ancient cemetery that dates back over 2,300 years. The cemetery is unique in that it was full of Greek bodies, because the ancient city of Naples, called Neapolis by the Romans, was never truly Roman. It was founded by the Greeks in the 8th century BC. Even when the Romans came and took control of it, it still remained a Greek city. This is a monumental revelation because it shows that Naples has never really been Italian, but has always been Greek. The evidence is 40 feet beneath the city streets, down steep staircases and inside creepy underground tombs. The necropolis was originally dug into the hills outside the walls of Neapolis and filled with countless corpses. But because of mudslides, almost all the tombs have been buried and lost and are currently inaccessible. If you're wondering what kind of difference it makes whether the ancient city had Greek roots or Roman roots, let me take a quick second to explain. It's dramatically different because the Greeks and Romans, although they lived at the same time, were vastly different people. In the city of Neapolis, the Greeks would have been practicing for the Olympic Games, while at the same time, the citizens of nearby Pompeii would have been holding bloodthirsty gladiator battles. Number 1. Walking Upright For the past 200 years, scientists have generally accepted something called the Savannah Hypothesis. 
This is the hypothesis which claims human evolution happened on the open grasslands of Africa. The theory argues that about 8 million years ago, tropical forests began to retreat closer to the coastlines of Africa, leaving huge expansions of grasslands in the center. This vanishing of the forests forced our early primate ancestors to walk out onto the savanna, where the trees weren't so close together. The lack of trees forced our very distant ancestors to stop swinging from branch to branch and walk upright. And this was how human evolution happened. But that may not actually be how it happened. Because looking at the geological history of Africa, researchers have already seen that tropical African grasslands expanded at least 3 million years before the first hominids started walking on two feet. What this means is that the early hominids were already out in the savanna plodding around before they began to walk upright like humans. To say that they had to walk upright because they ran out of trees just doesn't make sense. Even in the grasslands, there would have been plenty of patches of jungle. It's not like they were wandering around in the middle of a flat desert. The consensus is that scientists don't actually know how humans evolved. That is to say, for all of their theories, none of them have been proven. We just don't know what caused early primates to take their first steps. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon for another video. See you later. Bye.